I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, events are underway this week in New York to mark the 50th anniversary of that World's Fair. That In 1964, when the fair took place in Flushing Meadows Corona Park, Queens, it drew 51 million visitors over the span of two years. On April 22, 1964, President Lyndon Johnson spoke at the fair's opening ceremonies. This fair represents the most promising of our hopes. It gathers together from 80 countries the achievements of industry, the health of nations, the creations of man. This fair shows us what man at his most creative and constructive is capable of doing. Yes, it was 50 years ago that fairgoers flocked to the World's Fair to get a taste of the wider world and a glimpse of a possible future full of rocket ships, super highways, and complex kitchen gadgets. But that year, a very different future was being chiseled out by a devoted group of civil rights activists who used the prominence of the World's Fair to propel their fight for racial equality into the national consciousness. Their vision for the future involved less spaceships and more integrated schools. They were less interested in the fair's futuristic exhibits and more concerned with equitable hiring practices on the fair's grounds. The protesters greeted President Johnson with chants for the passage of the Civil Rights Act. Of the 700 who demonstrated, nearly 300 were arrested and carted off to jail. We turn now to looking at this largely untold history. We're joined by Norman and Velma Hill, longtime civil and labor rights activists. Fifty years ago, they helped organize that nonviolent protest at the New York World's Fair. Um, I, we welcome you both to Democracy Now! Talk about what the scene was like. You got into the World's Fair, or you were standing right outside? We got into the World's Fair. But first, let me just thank you for having us here. Um, we're very happy to be here, and we're very happy to talk about an event that most people just aren't aware of now. Um, it was April 22nd, which, by the way, was Norm's birthday. Uh, so we were doing— Happy birthday, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing what we did most of the time, which was demonstrating. Um, now, that was a core demonstration. but. You, you mean should, the Congress of Racial Equality? The Congress of Racial Equality Corps under Jim Farmer, because Corps became a very different organization uh, years uh, later. But this was under Jim Farmer, right after the Freedom Riots in the South. And we were very concerned. Norm was the program director of Corps, and we were doing many things to bring the um, what was going on in the South to the North, because there were always problems in the North. And Velma was East Coast Field Secretary. Of course, yes. We were a couple at CORE. And we had something very interesting happening on that uh, April 22nd. We had what we called extremist groups in CORE, who had decided that they agreed with our goals. But they didn't like our tactics. What they wanted to do was what they called a stall-in. And the stall-in, they had planned to do some very interesting things. They had planned to go on to subways, stop subways from running by pulling, pulling down the, um, the emergency, the break. emergency cool. break. They had planned to um, sit in at the bridges and stop people from going to work. And they had planned to take ravenous rats and uh, <clears throat> set them loose when uh, President Johnson was uh, going to speak. And we just didn't think that that was a good idea. We thought that that's really preventing workers from going to work, who had nothing to do with the World's Fair. So we planned something at the World's Fair where we got 700 people from around the country to come in, to sit in at pavilions, to say we want the passage of the Civil Rights Bill, and we want to make sure that there are minorities working at the World's Fair, visibly working, because this world is not a white world. It is a white world and a brown world and a black world, and we wanted to make that statement. And make